So in this exercise, what we aim to do is to model this in 3D using the dimensions given on the photographic view. And once we are done modeling in 3D, we want to extract the autographic projections and then fully dimension the autographic projections. Okay, so we'll continue with the next exercise here. And as always, make sure you switch to uh, 3D modeling. Uh, and then um, you should also have in view, you should also select, say, uh, Southwest uh, isometric and you should be ready to go okay so for this next exercise let's begin by drawing the base in place so i think we can begin with a rectangle and then i always want to make sure that i begin at the origin so the dimensions of the rectangle would be 100 uh, by uh, by five zero so that is that and then I want to fillet this edge okay so let me turn on the line weights and uh, perhaps for the layers, let me go to uh, the layer manager. And for the line weight, let me increase the line weight, maybe 0 0.3. Okay, like that. So, okay. Uh, so I can go to fillet and I'm going to fillet this here, you know, uh, but then let me first click on radius and then put in a radius of uh, 30, that's 30. Uh, and then I have uh, a hole, so let me represent that with a circle. And then you know that is concentric concentric uh, concentric to the to the fillet and the diameter of the hole is um, is 20 so radius will be 10 okay so this is the base you know that's what's happening at the bottom so uh, what I can do then is once I have that drawn in, okay, so once I have this, I can go to press pull and then I'll select this area, right? So I'll get 10 like that and then I can hit escape. Okay, so that's my base in place. I can draw this slender rectangle, you know, on this face. So I have some, uh, a rectangle which begins from there and then perhaps perhaps I can switch to a 2d and then I have I could actually be use box if I wanted so uh, that right so I'm doing that slender box and the length is 50 and the width should be the width should be 10 and then the height on it is 40 okay so that is that and uh, I can do another one uh, just like that so if I switch to conceptual this is where I am mm -hmm. 
okay so what i would actually do is i'll just um draw the last feature um i'll draw that away so okay so let's switch to let's say front and then i perhaps let me use this so these distances will be uh, 50 there then tap this should be 40 right that okay and then uh, we have this in place so we could now go for this and then the radius there should be uh, 15 and then TR for trim so now trim so let me click on cutting edges and then select this and that hit enter and then I'll cut with this cut with that hit escape and now let's chew this through a distance of 25 so let me uh, press pull it through 25 like that now I can hit escape and what I want to do is I want the other corner so right so I'll go to M for move and then I'll select this hit enter and I'll grab this corner and put that corner here okay all right now I can go back home like that and then uh, perhaps I can select these and then delete them and uh, from here uh, I can now go back to world okay so I want to union the three blocks so I'll go to solid and then click on union and then I can select this and that and finally this and hit enter and the three will be put together for me as one block okay um, right so this basically will be uh, the solution this will be the solution that uh, is required for us in 3D. Okay, so to draw the autography views, obviously uh, on the layout tabs, click here on layout one. And it appears um, the software has automatically generated the views for us, but uh, okay. So we click on layout one that brings us here, and then on the tabs we see an additional tab layout. We click on it, and then we we'll go to base, and then uh, from model space. Uh, in here I have a scale of 1 is to 2 let me see if uh, the true scale would work so 1 is to 1 I think that should work and then I should have say the front view and then I'll click on exit and now the top view and uh, I think these two should suffice I don't think I'll need a third view and then once I bring it to the side like this, I can get the isometric. And now I hit uh, enter. As usual, I'll double click on this and then I'll go to uh, here. I want shaded with visible lines and then I would okay that. Okay, that's great. And now what's left is for us to put in some dimensions. So, 
uh, I would do that. Uh, now for the dimensions, obviously we can go to annotate and then uh, you can click in here and then you use um, ISO 25, which is fine. So for that, we can go to dimension and then uh, we can dimension this part. So click here, click there, and that should be 10. And I want to continue, so I click on continue and then click here and then enter so that I would have the both of them like that. And then uh, at the bottom, I can click on, uh, I would have to click on dimension and then uh, let's click here and there to place this dimension. And then uh, on the side, we can dimension that as 10 and then what might we do? So from here to there is 10 as well. I'll click on uh, continue and then I'll continue up to this point and finally that's and hit enter. Uh, what else might I do? So obviously I would have to go back to dimension and then dimension this part like that and click on continue that up to this point and then enter now I think uh, dimension once more and I want to dimension uh, this in diametral terms so uh, the diameter of this is 20 so I'll put that somewhere there and then dimension this in radial terms like that and I think that's uh, just about it. Okay, sure this is what I need. So uh, I can click in here and I click on manage dimension styles. What I want to do is I want to click on modify and for the dimension height say make it 3.5 and then I would okay that then close to make it somewhat bigger and this is it for us okay so